Ayan na, ayan na mga kameta. Kamusta kayo dyan? Ayan, mga ka-unity. Ayan, kamusta ang presyo ng sibuyas? Kamusta na mga kayo dyan? Pag-usapan natin. Ito mga latest. Latest, guys. Ito na. Magellan Jr. Malapit na natin ma-circumnavigate ang buong mundo po na 8th trip in barely 7 months. no And there'll be a 9th trip uh, li- most likely to Japan by second week of uh, February. So, eto na. Malapit na natin ma-circumnavigate po. Uh, siguro naman, makahabol na sa South America, di ba? Yung, yung uh, ating ano talaga, Magellan Jr. daw. Sabi nila, hindi na ano... Ayan, pag-usapan natin guys, medyo let's, let's, let's look at what is this World Economic Forum all about and put into historical context, particularly yung address ng dating Pangulo, no? uh, yung uh, former and the late President uh, Benigno Aquino guys, dun sa World Economic Forum. Kasi nag-present din si Pangulo Aquino back in the day, back in 2014, uh, dun sa World Economic Forum. And of course, many are drawing comparisons between what was said back then and compared to what's about to be said this week under our current president, Marcos Jr. So, eto now. So, in addition to that, of course, mga kameta, naging malaking issue din itong uh, discussions about ano po yung expenditures, ano po yung gastos dito sa mga foreign trips na yan. Hindi naman kasi libre yan. And of course, as much as I support uh, our presidents going abroad, helping to make the best brand for our country, drumming up investments and uh, in business, as President Marcos Jr. put it, the question also is... Uh, how do we avoid a situation of junkets? How do we make sure na frugal and efficient yung usage of resources natin? Because let's not, be, let's not forget, mga kameta, si FVR, yung ating first supposed global president, always made sure that his, his cabinet, uh, hindi, for, always made sure na hindi junket ang mangyari. Only the essential cabinet will be there. Very frugal, uh, pagdat, eh, ilokane. Eh. Very frugal yung expenditures, di ba? I, so in short, even if you, you can have a lot of travels, but you have to make sure na hindi junket ang mangyari, na kung sino-sino lang nandiyan at extravagant, no? Especially when you're talking about visits to very expensive parts of the world, including Davos, na pag-usapan natin shortly. And so there have been a number of articles about the expenditures. Now, to just put into context, back in 2017, no? Uh, President Duterte, he also was mahilig sa visits, visits, travels, travels. So one of the things that came up was yung expenditures, No? So, oh, base sa mga reports na nakita natin, under President Duterte, in his first year in office, more or less, no? from June uh, 2016 to 2017, yung ginastos niya sa foreign trips ay thrice more than ganyang mga predecessors. So, just to put in the context, mahilig din mag-travel yung dating presidente natin, uh, si President Duterte. And there were a lot of concerns about whether junket to mga to, whether justified to mga to. And accordingly, of course, people are also raising questions about previous travels by other presidents, including President Aquino, to the World Economic Forum almost a decade ago, nine years ago, and then now, of course, with President Marcos. No, pag-usapan natin yan. Now, just a little bit of context. If gusto natin maintindihan saan, at ano ba tong Davos na ito? No? Una-una, tignan natin, na, tignan natin mga expenditures sa Davos. So, if you just Google it, this is the rates you're gonna get for hotel rooms. Per night, no? Uh, these are not even presidential suites, no? Hindi ito yung mga malalaking rooms. These are just the basic rooms. You can see the rates are ranging between 9,000, 8,000, all the way to 32,000. And these are not even the pinaka-social na hotels na meron tayo. This is per room, potentially per person, no? So kung malaking delegation mo, you can, you can imagine how big the expenditures is, no? Uh, so tingnan natin, for instance, here. Just to give you an idea how social this Davos thing is, uh, so, ito, ito yung mga hotels. Ayan, talagang, ito, tingnan mo yung mga hotels. So, Hotel Darby Davos, Zentrum House Davos, Hotel Valda House Davos, Alpen Gold Hotel, 32,000 per night. This is for tonight, no? This is for February. I'm ah, sorry, this is for February, for instance. No, not tonight, sorry. So, these are the rates, for instance, if you get, if you put February. You can, of course, put uh, for, for January and you'll get the... Uh, not necessarily lost the cheap rates. Tignan natin, especially ngayon, no? Uh, Davos. Lagay natin ng... <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys can do it yourself, no? So, lagay mo, for instance, January 16. Alright? Tapos, to January 
Lagi mo January 16. You're gonna get some interesting numbers here, diba? Sabihin natin dito. Ano ba nangyari dito? Ba't naghang? Ay, puno na? O oh, yan. Okay, ito na lang. Para sabihin nila fair. Oh, ay. ay, iba. Iba. Mas malaki pang naman. So, ito. Nalagay lang natin, for instance, for January 16 this week. These are the rates you're gonna get, mga kameta. No? Iba. So, you know, I'm just trying to put things into context here, alright? Parang hindi naman sasabihin ng tao na ano lang tayo dyan. Nagkakontra lang tayo. No, I, first of all, I, I see the value of going to the World Economic Forum. I'll discuss that shortly. So, ito po yung number na nakuha natin. Oh, ito po. So, umaabot, umaabot sa 295,000 some of the hotels per night. 43,000. So, mas mahal ngayon. 53,000. So, the minimum I saw, for instance, in this is 11,000. No? Uh, all the way to almost 300,000 pesos per night. No, nakikita natin rates. Just for one night. No, January 16 to January 17. You can Google it yourself if you don't believe me. So, the hotels we mentioned a while ago. Those are the rates for February na hindi ganun ka high season compared to now. Now, of course, mala- marami mga delegations kayo. So, you're looking at rates of 11,000, 10,000, all the way to 300,000 almost. No, $6,000 per night. So, hindi yan biro. No? Kaya nga, uh, don't be surprised that some people are asking all of these questions about, okay, Okay, fine. Maybe there's a value. Okay. Let me f- be fair, first of all. I think President Marcos Jr. has all the reasons to be there in the World Economic Forum. I'm glad that actually he's there at the World Economic Forum because, katulad ng sinasabi natin, kailangan natin i-correct no, yung mga problema na niya over the past five, six years under President Duterte. No, President Duterte, for all his best intentions, I'm trying to be fair and nice here, uh, he really didn't help Philippines' national image. No, Now, yung mga henyo dyan na gusto i-blame pa yung media, I blame pa yung mga experts for pointing out the facts, no? Meaning, you know, the barabara drug war, the contradictory statements, kapalpakan ng- nangyari. These are all based on evidence and data when it came to the management of the COVID-19. All of these things, if you keep them in mind, uh If you keep all of those things in mind, it's about my interview request yata to. uh Sorry, kailangan kayo siya. <laughs> Multitask, walang production. Nee, ito, ito, ito. Ito, ako, let me be very clear. I'm not against foreign travels travels per se. Um, in particular, I also see the value of going and attending the uh, the World Economic Forum because this is very important, guys. This is the gathering of the really super elite, economic, political, intellectual players around the world. You want to make a good impression, especially after yung, all those Tatay-style populist antics, undiplomatic statements, fighting allies, subservience to China, Russia, all of those things. So we really need to do some reintroduction or rebranding no? uh, uh, to be more, more accurate about this. I'm all for that. 100% I'm for that. So let me be very clear. On the record, no, I am for attending this World Economic Forum the same way that I am. I was for President Aquino attending the World Economic Forum 2014. No, I'm, I'm not, but I'm not necessarily for attending this every year. No, At, So what we're really trying to say here is, okay, ngayon na sa World Economic Forum ka, anong gusto mong gawin? Di ba? Now, even before talking about that, ano po yung mga expenditures? No? How big is the uh, delegations? How optimal is the delegations? Do you need an op- delegations of five cabinet members, three cabinet members, ten cabinet So we have to have a discussion about that. So it cannot be just nega ka lang or all the way, let's just be okay with it. No, the details matters. The size of the delegation matters. The content of the speech matters. The impact of the speech matters. You na titignan natin, and we'll have more and more coverage of that throughout the week as the international media covers Marcus Jr.'s visit to Davos. So, pinakita natin, guys, the rates are crazy. You're looking at, what, six, seven, ten thousand 10,000 pesos, 11,000 pesos per night, sa mga pinaka-basic na grepa, all the way to 300,000 per night lang yun, di ba? So, we're looking at a lot of expenditures here, guys. So, we want to make sure na hindi ito junket. We want to make sure that this is maximum impact. So, yes, I am for the visit, but with the following caveats. Now, as I said, yung Davos na yan, for the past two or three decades, this has been the gathering of the world elite. So, dito pinag-usapan the landscape, the global landscape, investment landscape. Ano yung mga dapat priorities ng mga iba't ibang bansa? Ano po dapat ang gagawin ng uh, mga global business leaders or global policy makers to make sure na may economic recovery theory. Dito ina-identify yung mga key crisis around the world. This, te- this year, the number one cliche is polycrisis. No? So the convergence of multiple crises all around the world, whether it's in 
in in you know in Ukraine, whether it's in the oils, uh, you know, production in the Middle East, whether it's uh, populism, whether it's in China, whether it's in Taiwan, so on and so forth. So poly crisis, convergence of this, not to mention the impending in the recession in the U.S. and some of the major Western economies. All of these things, these are going to be discussed. So mahalaga yan, mga kameta, mahalaga mga yan. So again, I'm not against attending this fora per se. I think there's a value in attending this fora, but it has to be under justifiable circumstances, and it has to be in in a calibrated, targeted manner. You know, that, that's, that's one thing that I have to keep in mind. And for me, the timing is perfect because President Marcos Jr. is coming after six years of populist antics and demagoguery and all of the kind of nonsensical stuff we saw in, in the previous year. So this was very important. So in a way, he's picking up where Aquino left off. And let's talk about what President Aquino did. If you look at President Aquino's address in 2014, this was during the time that the Philippines was actually economic, like this at uh, the macro level was doing well. The Philippine economic growth was one of the highest in the world, and inflation was among the lowest, right? So inflation under Aquino was under 2% uh, throughout the years, you know? Uh, so we kept it within target 2 to 4%, you no? Know? So for instance, if you look at the data here, um, So we're looking at 6.2% average growth rate under President, uh, President Aquino. No? Uh, so really, really impressive numbers we were, we were seeing back in the day. But as impressive, guys, is yung ano. As impressive is yung ano. Yung presyo ng sabuyas, di ba? Yung presyo ng sabuyas para ni Aquino was ano, 60 pesos pa. O ngayon, what? 500, 600, 300, di ba? No, but, but look at the inflation rate. If you look at the inflation under President Aquino, the inflation rate was really stable. Now, of course, there were external factors that explained it, right? But generally, inflation rates under different presidents was pretty stable. So, here's an interesting one that we see. Oh, I ay, ayoko na. Kasi ito pala nag-post. Never mind. Ito, Department of Finance. No? So, we had an inflation rate of, sorry, 2.8% pala, sorry around 2.8% under President Aquino. This, I'm, I'm using the DTI number. So, clearly within the target. Uh, I, I'm using the DTI numbers pa dito, no? Now, of course, there are also questions about how it was calculated. So, ito, for instance, this is the numbers you see by DTI. So, the inflation was around 2% under Aquino. At some points, it was barely 1%. Sabuyas was around 60 pesos, whatever. So the numbers are very clear. Very high economic growth rate. So this is so we had around 6% growth rate. That, that number for President Duterte is, of course, before the pandemic. Things massively changed after the pandemic, especially because it was massively under, uh, you know, not mismanaged. Uh, but the thing, the difference is that inflation was also very low under Pinoy. So I'm using actually the Department of Finance numbers here. So if you look at the numbers here, you're looking at 2.2%, no? Just above 2%, no? You inflation rate not. And so now there are different ways to, to measure inflation, but some of the inflation rates would put it at just above 2% or so. No? So very low inflation, very high growth rates, very good combination, no? This is the situation we had. And it was against this backdrop that President Aquino felt confident, well to do, went to the World Economic Forum and presented speech. Now, one thing very, very interesting with President Aquino also is that dun sa speech niya, it was not a papogi speech lang, but it was a speech that put the Filipino people at the center, ordinary Filipinos at the center of discussion. So, so this is a news report from back in the day, 2014. President Aquino spotlights ordinary Filipinos at World Economic Forum. And, and a copy of his speech actually can is available for free on the World Economic Forum website. You can check it yourself. Uh, so just to give you an over, uh, oversight. So, President Aquino said back in the day, we're intent on making certain each and every Filipino enjoys the full dividends of progress. So he acknowledged the necessity for inclusive development. And sabi niya, I appeal on behalf of the World Economic Forum. i sorry. Uh, so yun sinabi niya, okay. Uh, and, and the response was really, really good to that. The response was really good to that. Now, let me be very clear. No? The World Economic Forum is not held in Davos all the time. I mean, there's, there's the World Economic Forum in Davos, and then there's the World Economic Forum held in, 
in different parts of the world, so parang sub WEFs. And one of them was actually held in the Philippines, and that's the context within which President Aquino gave a speech. So this was not the speech per se in the uh, the uh, in, in Davos in Switzerland na napakamahal. This was actually held, this is the 23rd World Economic Forum on East Asia at the Shangri-La Hotel in Makati City. I'm referring to, so let's just be exact with it. I'm not talking about Davos, I'm talking about the, the one that was held here in the Philippines back in 2014. So nevertheless, in, in that speech, even first of all, in Disha Mahal, he didn't have to go all the way to, to Davos and all. Dito lang sa atin lang. But it's the importance of the, the backdrop. The backdrop was stable inflation, high economic growth rates, and also the recognition by the president that we need inclusive development. That was very, very much there, you know. Now, President Marcos is coming in in a very different context, no? Daming mga cabinet reshuffles na nangyari, no? More than half a dozen, by some counts. And daming travels also, more than one per month. And that's against the backdrop of almost double-digit inflation, almost. You know, you can 8 to 9%, no? So that's why the context is very different. And some are asking if this is the perfect time. For me, huh? Again, uh, to be fair, I think there's a value for him to be there. But we have to make sure that it's not what's going on here. And there are a number of articles here which you can check on your own that looks at the expenditures, it, you know, who's spending, how much is being spent. So this, for instance, is an article by Antonio Montalvan, an investigative journalist based in Mindanao. The um, title of work is Who Foots the Bill for Marcos Davao? Uh, the Davos trip, Davos trip, sorry, Davos trip, no? Because uh, other countries are coming with very, very small delegations, including from major powers, no? Uh, just to make sure that it's expensive or anything like that, no? Uh, also, there's, there's, there's another article here by Gavilian about the expensive mountain rating for Marcos in the World Economic Forum. What's the Davos Forum all about? Whether it's practical and all. So I really suggest you guys to read this ones on your own. Uh, before you come up with any kind of judgments. So I don't want to go in and, and make a big judgments right away. I want to look at more data and numbers coming out. Size of delegation, the exact speech, the impact of the speech, what is impressing anyone, what is getting more than just pledges of investment, but actually impressing international investors and making them think twice about being dismissive about the Philippines, giving a second look to the Philippines, giving a third, fourth look to the Philippines, and hopefully bringing in the high quality investments that we desperately need in the country. So yon. So yan, yan ang latest update natin sa Magellan Jr. Okay. <laughs> ano na? Uh, we are going all around the world. Um malapit na ma ma ano, circumnavigate. Ano <laughs> tayo? Magpakabait na nga ako, mabait na nga ako eh. Sabi ko nga there's a value, but the devil is in the details and I want to see more more data coming in before I can make a final judgment on this. Pero yun lang, for me lang kasi in context, mataas ang inflation, dami dami cabinet under shuffle and sabi ko nga eh, that studies are very clear. If you want to bring in top-level investments, you have to impress investors with foundational strengths. The best way to bring investors is not necessarily to meet them abroad. You can send your cabinet members or you know some business delegation to do that. What's important is to create strong conditions at home, a good environment for investment at home. So, of course, given you a market size, but you need macroeconomic stability, including stable inflation, stable interest rate, and healthy economic growth to create more market. You need good regulatory environment. Make sure walang masyadong corruption, unpredictable corruption, all over the place corruption. You have to have some element of rule of law. Mahalaga din, mga kameta, when it comes to bringing investors, you have robust human capital, educated workforce, and then, um, importante din dyan, yung maayos na infrastructure and hindi mahal yung utility costs like electricity and all. These are not easy things to, to, to solve, but these are the things that President Marcos should ultimately focus on beyond the Grand Prix Singapore, beyond the you know, uh, more than a visit a month kind of stuff. Again, I see the value of him going to the World Economic Forum right now. I see the value of him going around and trying to win over friends or win back old friends while maintaining several relations with China and others. I see the value for that. But at some point, we're going to ask, how, how long are we going to see this? More than, a month, more than one visit a month, no? And we have to make sure hindi mga junket mato. These are really resource oriented, hindi lang mga pledges, but we're really getting solid investment commitments here that are gonna come in soon and are gonna help the Filipino people. So thank you very much, mga kameta, for this. We're gonna have more discussion on this soon. Pakabait na ako, ah. o, hindi na tayo nagbabardagulan. We just wanna analyze what's going on here. All right. So maram salamat again as always to Riz Annie, Eden Alon, uh, Lonan, to jo Justin Lamberio. Uh, thank you very much sa lahat ng mga 
nagka-comment, nagsusupport dito, kay Paul Lennon, kay Noemi Tablate, again, kay Ernie Carpio. May nagsabi sa akin na si Christian Esguerda, mga ganitong oras din siya. Okay, I don't want to keep you guys from watching and go ahead and watch him. I just want to do my part before I go back to my own work no, and teacher duties. Again, Eden Olonan, thank you very much. Isabelita Talatat, Miko, thank you for joining us. Kay Mitch Tengsha, as always. Ay, sa Zurich daw sila naka-check-in, sabi ni Mitch. Oh, kamusta naman ang presyo? I'm not sure that Zurich is, is cheap, no? 70 daw delegations. Okay. We can check the hotel prices in Zurich. I don't mind. I'm not sure it's cheap too. For sure, ibang delegations pumupunta rin. Zurich hotel cost. Oh, para, para walang masabi. O, lagay natin. January 16 to 17. Okay. Ay, hindi, hindi rin masyadong mura. Okay, mas mura. Mga 10,000 yung iba. 5 to 10,000. But still. Oh. Assuming sa Zurich itong mga ito. Ah. Oh. Anyway. O, oh, mamaya na tayo mag, magkwenta-kwentahan dito. Mamaya na tayo mag... Bilang dyan. Kamusta dyan? Makano yan? Makano? Oh. Of course, sabi na, matagal na nila na ano yan. So, siguro may discount sila. Thank you kay JCD Sorenses. Ayan. 70 daw yung delegates or 50? Ayan. Again, ha, kasi ayoko magsalita kasi gusto natin titignan talaga yung mga details. Ayan, bali mga kaasin natin dyan si ano, Pari Marco. Ayan. Hopefully mag-Espanya tayo soon. Tignan natin kung mag-catch up soon again. Alright. Uh, Siyempre, kaya lang din natin mag-Europe. Uh, we need to also go Europe. Uh, <laughs> ako naman, at least hindi naman junket. Mag-isa ko lang. At hindi naman ako nagbabayad sa mga ganun yun. Diba? Yung mga pinapayaan natin, yung mga extra tubig sa gabi, yung konting hot water dyan, extra noodles, yung mga ganun. Alright! Salamat mga kameta! Thank you very much. Uh, mamaya na tayo magbardagulan. Uh, and I hope you, you enjoyed our discussion today. Let's do more of this as more details come in. Ayoko na magsalita. I was just trying to contextualize things, no? Alright! Salamat! Salamat! Ayan, may nagalit na. Purong teori daw. Sabi ni Solo Flight, napaka-credible. Pangalan pa lang, credible lang, credible lang yung mga kritisismo. Alright, thank you very much guys. God bless. Talk to you soon.